are getting sleepy, very sleepy. Your eyelids are getting heavy. And listen to my voice and memorize this slide about hypnosis. Okay, you are familiar with hypnosis. You've heard of it before, but you're probably wondering, is this real? Does it really work? Well, most everyone agrees that hypnosis is not a false concept that it can be real and it can be very effective in some circumstances particularly for relieving pain and so most would agree with this first definition here that hypnosis is a trance-like state of consciousness usually induced by a procedure known as hypnotic induction which consists of heightened suggestibility deep relaxation and intense focus others might say it's more of a social interaction in which one person suggests to another that certain perceptions feelings thoughts or behaviors will spontaneously occur or some would call it a relaxed state. This concept has been around really since the Austrian doctor Franz Mesmer um, used to put uh, magnets around his patients bodies and telling them that they'd feel better and oftentimes they did feel better and they would fall into this trance like state saying that they were mesmerized that's where we get that word. Um, but the term hypnosis was actually coined in the year 1843 and since then there have been quite a few studies with it and um, not everyone can be hypnotized or is prone to hypnosis. They've done developed a few different tests about hypnotic suggestibility. About 15% of the population is highly responsive to hypnosis while 20% is really not capable of being hypnotized. Uh, the rest of the population falls somewhere in the middle there. But you're mo most likely to be hypnotized if you're willing and open to it, if you could focus your attention on one thing, if you can block out awareness of other stimuli, if you're open to new experiences, and if you're capable of fantasy. Okay, so a few myths about hypnosis. One is that the hypnotists are totally in control of the patients and they have no free will. Um, and that they could even be told to act against their will. Those are myths. That is not true. In a study done by Orrin and Evans in 1965, they had people who were hypnotized. They were told to do what seemed to be a very dangerous act. They were told that this a pot was actually acid and they were told to throw it in someone's face and they all did it and so they thought oh my goodness that's terrible they would never do that in real life and then they just told some other people to act like they were being hypnotized and to pretend and then they told them to throw the acid in the researchers face and they also did it so they essentially told us that uh, an authoritative authoritative person who seems legitimate and tells you to do something uh, you're gonna do it uh, and we see some later studies that show that prove that done by Stanley Milgram about obedience but maybe that's why it seems like they're gonna do dangerous things just because they're being told to do that by someone who is an authority figure um, post hypnotic suggestion um, this is the idea that people can be told to do certain things and they'll forget about it and carry it out later. What they find is most people do remember their experiences under hypnosis, especially when really pressed to admit that. But there is this idea that um, people can be hypnotized and told to to do things like stop smoking and that that can have actually a real impact on their behaviors later on. Another myth is that hypnosis can bring back repressed memories and that's not true. People are sometimes told to like act like six-year-olds or something and what they found is that they act like uh, how they think a six-year-old would act and not actually like a true six-year-old. So that has disproven that theory. But hypnosis does work to alleviate pain, so we know it can be a real thing. Um, hypnobirthing, using hypnosis to deal with childbirthing and labor pains, um, these are real things. In fact, 75% of hypnotized patients report substantial pain relief because of hypnosis. So what's going on here? There's two main theories, the social influence theory, and that's just saying that it's almost like the placebo effect. People become so convinced it's going to work and they're socially influenced by it, so they do it. They're caught up in this role. But then there's this other theory that it really does something to our consciousness. It splits it. It's called a divided consciousness. And this is an idea um, developed by Hilgard, Ernest Hilgard, who said that 
uh, we can kind of be semi aware of our reality but we can be so focused and in tune with uh, this different altered reality that we can totally block out the other's conscious experience.